Hello and welcome back to another TechTap tutorial. My name is Nicholas and today we are going to be doing a logic board replacement on a MacBook Pro 16 inch A2485. We had this computer come into our business that had a logic board issue where it just wasn't booting something that they didn't need the data for. So in the event rapid replacement, we've decided to um, go ahead and give them a new logic board and swap it out for them because it would be faster than repairing um, and a little bit cheaper. Now, um, like any of our repairs, this is something that um, is a bit tricky and it does have a lot of screws. So please do follow along um, the entire way through before attempting it yourself because it is something that uh, there are a lot of moving parts and it's something that you will need to, to keep track of. All of these parts as well are going to be on techdep.com. So feel free to look at the link in our description down below and get anything that you are looking for for MacBook, PC, phone, tablet, any type of repair you can think of. We have it down at techdep.com and we also do data recovery. So in the event that this client did have data, we would be able to get it in a pretty quick uh, fashion as well. But let's get started. Now, like any repair, the first thing you're going to do is take off the back plate screws. Uh, you'll be using a Apple PL5. And then keeping all the screws together in the order that you took them off will help you. So as I'm doing, I'm keeping all of the back plate screws in the same area and then I'll just be putting them down uh, one by one as I start to, to take out more of them. After that, we're gonna take off the back plate. There are two latches, which one is gonna be on the right side, one is gonna be on the left side. You're just gonna go under it with your pry tool and pop open both of them. And then with that, all you have to do now is just pull up to release the other two latches and then go ahead and with one hand push forward and the other hand you're going to pull the top case off. Uh, it should come off rather easily, so definitely don't have to worry. All right, now with any repair, the first thing we're going to do is take off the battery um, or disconnect the battery rather. That way you can discharge the entire computer before working on it in the event to not mess anything else up. With that, we do have to undo the trackpad cable right here. And then undo the battery flex cable. The pancake screw that is holding the battery connector down. With that, the computer is now discharged, but you will want to go ahead and hold down the power button for about 10 seconds in order to make sure that all of the power has been successfully discharged from the entire unit. And after about 10 seconds, you are ready to continue to work on it. Now, because this is a logic board replacement, the only thing we're really going to be taking out today is just the logic board. So that involves um, undoing the top cable connectors from the Wi-Fi antenna, as well as the display, um, all the side connectors. Um, so everything that is going from the keyboard to the speakers, to the charger and USB C's on each side. Um, and then there are two speaker flex cables in the, or sorry, two fan flex cables in the middle that we'll be taking off as well. But I like to start by undoing all of the protective cases that are guarding all of the cables. So we'll start with the left side and move on from there.
Once you have undone all of the cables surrounding the logic board, just go ahead and do a once over just to make sure that you didn't miss anything. Um, it's always good to do that before we take anything out because that way we don't have to worry about possibly breaking a cable or anything like that. And once you verify that you have taken off all of the flex cables, the next step is just to take off all of the screws that are surrounding the board. Um, and we'll start by the top down. Now, same thing, it's good to keep all of these grouped in the order that you took them off. That way it's just easier for yourself to put them back together when you are putting the logic board back on. And then this one is a little bit specific. You're going to need a hexagon screw bit to take these two out. But those ones are just on the very bottom, right and left. With all of the screws taken out, all you need to do now is lift the logic board, uh, the old logic board out of casing. And with that, you just need to get under it with your pry tool. And with that, all you need to do is just lift under it with your pry tool to free it up. And go slow so that you don't damage any part of the logic board. And with that, you can take it out of its casing. There is one more thing to do before we continue to take the rest off. Um, we will need to remove one of the speakers to get to the Touch ID sensor. And every Touch ID sensor is connected to each specific logic board. So you will need to always replace the Touch ID sensor uh, when you are replacing a logic board as well. With the fan off, all we need to do is just unscrew these six screws from the top of the Touch ID sensor. And take off the protective cover. Gently get under the adhesive. And then you open the case, pull the Touch ID sensor out from the bottom. With that, you are now ready to put in your new logic board, which you can get here at techdep.com. Uh, we have many other parts just like this uh, for just about every MacBook that you can think of. So if you do need anything like a logic board or something as small as a speaker, we should have everything you need in the link in the description down below. But we will start with the new Touch ID sensor for the replacement of the logic board. Now, the same way we took it off, we will start in this case by opening the case and feeding the cable through the bottom being very careful not to damage the cable in any way because if your touch id is damaged unfortunately you will not be able to use any of its functions with the new logic board so being as uh, careful as possible is the best with that we will put back on the protective casing and in this order we will put the screws back on so you want to start by putting all four corners of the screws on before putting on the two in the middle. This being so you can center the Touch ID in its slot 
um, before tightening it all the way. Um, if you don't do this, you uh, can have like an uncentered touch ID sensor, which isn't necessarily a big deal. It's just a cosmetic issue. But if you want to do it right and have it look good, this is the order to do it in. With the four on the outside screwed in, you will just want to go and open the unit and center the touch ID with your finger. You just got to kind of eyeball it. And then once it is in there in place, you can now tighten the other two screws. These will hold it in place and make sure that it is centered in the box and that it looks the best. With that, we'll put back on our fan. Don't forget to put on the protective space. And now you're ready to reinstall your logic board. Every logic board is gonna go in one way on this model. So you are going to have to insert it over here on the left side and then place it down. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that rather slow because you will have to individually move up each cable to make sure that it clears them um, and that you get everything above so you can uh, go ahead and install them after it is in. So you will want to insert the HDMI over onto the far left side, and then one by one, ensure that every cable is pulled to the top. Take this slow because there are a lot. Also, don't forget the rubber guards for the heat sink. And then go around and just make sure that every cable that is supposed to be on top is on top. And now all we have to do is just start by connecting each one of them. Um, I like to do this before I go ahead and install the different screws that are in the logic board because sometimes it can shift and not particularly line up with where they are supposed to go. So it's good to get them in beforehand before you tighten everything and then have to go in and loosen it all. But we'll start with the left side. Once you have installed all of your cables, we are now going to start by screwing in uh, all of the motherboard screws, which you should have grouped up, like I said before, so it'll make it easier for you to install them. But the two biggest screws are gonna be at the very top. And then that hexagon looking screw on both the bottom left and bottom right. With those completed, the final step is just to go around and reinstall all of the protective casings that are going to be on uh, every single one of the flex screws. 
Um, originally, we started from the left to the right, but because of how our screws are set up, we'll go from the right to the left and go from the bottom to the top. Um, that is how you should be doing it, so you don't lose anything and everything is in the correct order and the correct place. But we'll start with the speaker. Now that all of them are screwed in and protected, the last step is just to reconnect the battery flex cable and the trackpad cable, and then everything is completely ready to go. Uh, we'll start by reconnecting the pancake screw, then the battery flex cable. And then the trackpad. And last. The bottom case. With everything screwed on, all we need to do now is go ahead and connect it to a charger. Turn on the unit. And hear that boot up screen. And there we go. The unit is all set up and ready to go with the new logic board installed in the A2485 MacBook Pro 16 inch. Now, like I said, all of these parts you will find on our website. Um, so feel free to go ahead and take a look. And if you got to the end of this video and feel like it's just not necessarily something that you feel comfortable doing, don't worry, we have mail-in repairs available. So if you are um, out of state or even potentially out of country. Yes, we do take mail-in repairs from all across the world. Feel free to fill in a mail-in request form. We take a look at it, get back to you within the day, and then you can decide if you would like to move forward with our mail-in repair process. If not, I truly do trust you. I think you are able to do this if you just follow the video along like I've laid it out for you and have a little bit of faith. But thank you so much again for watching. Um, my name is Nicholas and have a wonderful day.